Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of When Skies Wash Ashore, the third studio record by the band Straight Line Stitch. Today we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of the record, so I decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple, I've stumbled upon their music video for the song Remission back in the year 2009 I think, since then I've been their massive fan. My favorite release from them is the 2003 promotional EP Jaggermeister. Here's the lineup, we've got Alexis Brown on the vocals, she's been with the band since 2003, Seth on the guitars, he's the founding member, Pat on the guitars, Jason on the bass and Patrick on the drums. Patrick is also one of the founding members and this is his final release with the band. The production is tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping, just the way I like it, message is diverse, the songs are mostly about personal struggles, relationship issues, society, stuff like that. Structure of the tracks is between basic and advanced, it usually follows the structure of intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro, sometimes it's slightly different, where they add lots of segments that do not repeat in the middle, and the music on this record could be described as metalcore with slight mellow death and new metal influences. The album starts with the song Never See The Day and the first thing you're going to notice here is the drumming, Patrick is straight up killing it, his drumming is precise, his technique is amazing, I love his double bass work the groove, just everything, he can play it fast, he can play it slow, he can do it all. Next is the bass and I must say that Jason is also amazing, I love that the bass is audible, he mostly follows the guitars but you can hear that he's doing his own patterns, he has that tool vibe when it comes to his playing, I truly enjoy it. Next are the guitars, they are fine, we have some classic breakdown parts, zero zero runs but also some more melodic lead guitar work. Sometimes they even play those new metallish dissonant chords. Finally we have the vocals by Alexis and she has a very distinct sounding voice. I truly enjoy it, but I must say that compared to her previous singing, it just changed into something that I don't particularly enjoy. Like listen to her singing back in 2003 or 2006, it had that pleasant beautiful vibe to it. And here she's more like, I don't know, aggressive or maybe deeper with her voice. And it doesn't sit well with me. It's still okay, don't get me wrong, but before this record it was way better. So that's the singing. The screaming and growling is on point, as usual. Never See The Day is a great opener. I especially enjoy the drumming on this version, the guitars, the bass, it all works. The vocals could have been better. They aren't as good as on the 2003 original version and also for some reason they've dumped down the outro, like that final breakdown doesn't have the dissonant chords anymore, I don't know why. The original version just had more variety in the changes and here it's much more polished and basic I would say. So 9 out of 10, Promise Me is a good song if you don't pay attention to it. I enjoy the verses, the vocals and the chorus could have been better. And then it hit me. Promise Me is a new version of the song Remission, because back in 2007 this band released an EP called The World Made Flesh, and it basically has the earlier versions of the songs from this album. And I must say that Promise Me is just worse in every single way compared to the Remission, which was actually released as a single with a music video, and I've watched Remission back in 2009. It was my first song that I've heard from this band and to hear it being butchered and destroyed in this new version, it's not good, it's not good, believe me. The only thing that is the same are the verses, because Remission has better chorus, better changes, the structure is much more advanced, we have better bass notes, that's for sure, that outro goes so hard and even the breakdown in the middle slaps, and then we have Promise Me. A song that sounds like a mainstream garbage, like if Remission did not exist, I guess I would enjoy Promise Me, I would give it probably 6 out of 10, but because it's a butchered version of a classic song, I'm giving it 5 out of 10, and Remission is 10 out of 10. Taste of Ashes features Jamie Jasta of the band Hatebreed, and it's a classic song, I truly enjoy it, especially the vocals from Jamie, he's straight up killing it. Alexis is also fine on the screaming and growling. The chorus, well, it's fine, could have been better. The thing I love the most about this song is the drumming and the guitar work, 9 out of 10. Eucharist or however you pronounce that shit. Now this is much more mellow song compared to the previous ones, 
It has mostly singing in it. I am not going to cry about it, I truly enjoy the chorus and the guitar riffs and also the bass. I don't even need to mention the drumming because it's phenomenal. 8 out of 10. Black Vio was released as a single with a music video. This is one of the best songs on the record. I just love everything about it. The drumming, the bass, the guitars, the vocals. The singing here is on point and the screaming and growling, wow, just wow. All of the breakdowns here just go so fucking hard, especially that one where she screams, forgive you, how could I? That's my favorite part because the drummer is doing double bass and that's so fucking cool. I love the bass here as well. The 2007 version is slightly different, like there are different vocal lines, but the singing is better. The instrumental, from what I remember, is exactly the same. What can I say? I think that the album version is actually better, which is quite surprising. So 10 out of 10 to the album version, 9 out of 10 to the EP version. Next song, Adult Cinema. Now I just love the instrumental work here, especially the bass work. The bass is on fire here. The guitar riffs also beautiful, the drumming style as usual, the singing, well, it's beautiful in the chorus and the screaming in the verses is fine, but the bridge, it just, it's not so good, you know, the singing there, not for me. And now, the 2007 version is actually better, it has better screaming, better singing, it's better in every way except the production, their production isn't that good on that EP. So, 9 out of 10 to the album version and 10 out of 10 to the EP version. What you do to me is the worst idea this band has ever had. This is basically a new version of their song Bleeding Heart Fury from 2003. I think they've also re-recorded it for 2006 record to be godlike. And I don't even know where to start. The entire song is almost sank. There are no screaming sections or growling sections, almost no breakdowns. This is like a castrated version of that original song. It annoys me because the original is my favorite Straight Line Stitch track like ever. So what the fuck have you done with your best song? You've basically destroyed it, you've abused it till it's not recognizable. It also has a music video, the new version, and people love it, but I just cannot love it because I've heard the original one and that one was superior in every single way. Like it had amazing vocal performance, Amazing guitar riffs, the bass, the drum, just everything fucking slapped. And this version, it sounds like a retarded cousin of the original. So 5 out of 10 and 11 out of 10 to the original one. Seneca Tragedy, now this is an interesting piece of music because from what I remember it only has clean vocals. And they are fine. I do enjoy the instrumental work, especially in the middle. I guess they could play it on the radio. But what's even more fun is the original version called Line of Fire from 2007 EP. This is the same song but it has screaming, growling, it has breakdowns which are not present in the album version. Also the vocals are way better in the Line of Fire. So I don't know why this new version exists, it's just fine. They do sound almost like different songs but you can feel that the instrumental is the same, they just changed the lyrics and the vocal patterns here and there, but they have actually did not change the chorus and some of the lines in the verses. If you do enjoy Seneca Tragedy, go check out Line of Fire and tell me what you think about it. So Seneca is 7 out of 10, Line is 8 out of 10. The World Made Flesh is a banger, it's my favorite song on this record, I just love the vocals here. Yes. The album version has actually great vocals, I love the screaming, the singing and the chorus, the chorus is just so weird, like the transition from the verse to the chorus, it sounds like a different song, wow, I love the verses, the chorus, just everything, this song is a banger from beginning to the end, and then we have the EP version, some parts here are better from the album version, like the verses, they have way better screaming, but the chorus on the album is way better, here it's quite different vocally, and the lyrics are slightly different, and it just doesn't hit you as much as the album version when it comes to the singing and the chorus. Everything else is superior, but I just like the album version more. So 10 out of 10 to the album and 9 out of 10 to the EP version. And the final song on the album Yesterday is Gone. This is an acoustic piece. It's fine. It's not like Inside Deprivation, which was a banger. This is just a good song. I do enjoy the singing here, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. It's a fine ending to the album, 7 out of 10, 
And we also have one song from the 2007 EP that didn't make the cut for the record, it's called Walking Dead. This one fucking slaps, it's the best song I'm talking about today, I just love the intro, the verses, the anger, the vocals are just so fucking angry, the growling, the screaming, and the singing is also beautiful. This is a masterpiece, it has that old school melodic death metal vibe to it, but it's mixed with hardcore and metalcore, I just love the atmosphere of this one. And what's funny is that the middle part of the song, like they've actually used it in Seneca Tragedy, only for 10 seconds, but it's there. And also one of the guitar riffs, like the second part of the song, I feel like they took it to create Taste of Ashes. I might be wrong, but it sounds very similar. Walking Dead might be the most underrated song by this band. 10 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is various and the flow is digestible, replayability. Yeah, it's a good record. I enjoy most of the songs here. If I didn't know that Promise Me was Remission or What You Do To Me was Bleeding Heart Fury, I guess I would rate this record higher. But because like three or four songs here are just a more inferior versions of their previous music, it kinda gets on my nerves. Usually the bands want to make their old school songs sound better on the new album, they want to expand them not make them more mainstream and shittier. Because you cannot reason with me when it comes to Promise Me. Promise Me is a worse song than Remission, and Remission was a fucking single with a music video. Why would you do this? Why would you change a song that everybody knows into some newer garbage? Like, I will never understand that. And also what you do to me? Seriously? You would destroy Bleeding Heart Fury, your best song for this garbage? But we have some great tracks here like The World Made Flash, Adult Cinema, Black Vile, Taste of Ashes. The new version of Never See The Day also has some improvements, especially in the drumming section, but I guess I still enjoy the original more. Still, I recommend listening to this album, but don't forget about their previous work so you can appreciate the songs more. Like, if you don't enjoy Promise Me, Go check out Remission, maybe you will love that one. And if you don't enjoy new version of Never See The Day, then check out the previous ones. I'm sure you will find something good here. Celebrate Rosary by spinning this record today, it deserves your love and attention. That's all from me, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, in the description, and I will see you in my other videos. Bye!